Good morning, everybody. So, Last of Us 2 is out today. Which, I, th I thought about streaming, but I was like, well, I could play through the opening of the game. Um, I could play the first hour, or I could find a save that's like, you know, partway through that maybe isn't too spoilery, but, like, you can only have so many save files in that game, so I kind of ran out. And, um... And I, I didn't know a good place to jump in, and I'm sure a lot of people want to go into Last of Us Part Two blind today. So I thought, you know, on my sort of ongoing truck here to just, like, play games I like that are on my mind while I try to figure out what I'm going to play in full next, I decided I'll play some Jack and Daxter. Because... uh in the first Last of Us, there were a lot of Jack and Daxter Easter eggs, like a ton. Like, every apartment seemed to have Jack and Daxter plushes in them. There's fewer Jack and Daxter Easter eggs in Last of Us Part Two, but there are a few. Uh, Ellie has a copy of, ja of the Jack and Daxter HD collection and a PlayStation 3 in her apartment, which you see, like, the first moment you take control of her in the game. So, yeah, let's play Jack and Daxter. The first Jack and Daxter, which is funny, I, I, oh, I loaded up this game and it turned out I had like, I have a save file that's at 100%. Let's see, let's just save over this one, I guess. Do you wish to overwrite this? Yes. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father Let's see. and my father's I am um, actually to find. came to the precursors? I started I played a little Jack and Daxter at like a friend's house and How did they my the sort of takeaway was like oh this seems kind of world. like a modern was their purpose? Mario 64 was kind of like how I looked at it I asked the plants, at the time and then when Jack 2 came out I played that I skipped Jack and Daxter and played Jack 2 and I just absolutely adore Jack 2. Like, it's one of my favorite games. I love Jack 2. And that made me go back and play Jack and Daxter. And it's funny because now, when I revisit these games occasionally, I actually think the original Jack and Daxter holds up better than Jack 2 and 3, just because it's a little cleaner, a little more straightforward, a little fo more focused on just, like, just the platforming and running around and exploring, where Jack 2 and 3 kind of get... It gets a little muddy with, with racing and driving and stuff like that. So it seems the answer begins not with careful research. But I do like I like where the story goes in Jack 2. Today, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small No Last of Us 2 spoilers in the chat, please, or anything like that. I won't spoil anything. I did finish it last night. And I really like that game, but I'm not I'm not gonna spoil anything. I do wonder if, um, if they would ever consider going back to Jack and Daxter. I know they've already, they've even had other developers, at least one, tackle another Jack and Daxter game. But I wonder if they would ever do a proper Jack 4, you know? I mean, Leafeon says, that's how I feel about the anyway, Sly games, Jack? too. The first one holds this up more than three due to the straightforwardness. Yeah, like, I like the other Sly games a lot, but Sly Cooper 1, just because it's like, we're focused, you're just playing as Sly Cooper, you're just platforming and sneaking around, like, it's it's one that's, like, more fun to go back to, I feel like. What is that dark ooze? It sure doesn't look friendly. <gasps> The sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? It's so funny that Daxter is like a human. Well, not a human. Whatever he is. They're not humans, but he is like not an Atzo in the beginning of the game. But then, like, 
for what four, five other games. He's uh, or four other games, I guess. Jack two, three, the racing game, and then the uh, the PSP game. Oh, and the other PSP game. So yeah, five. He's just always an Otzel. It's like they made that character model just for this opening cutscene. Hey, Jen, snacks. I'm fine. I'm fine. Kel rules. Thank you. May now dream right. Th thank you for checking in, Dan. It's very sweet of you. Dan, you gonna play Last of Us? I know it's not a PC game. I know you have a PlayStation 4 because of Bloodborne. What incarnation do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was. Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you to go. Animation in this game still very good. The island. That's right. And then. And Daxter, you finally took a much needed bath, but in a bathtub filled Dan with Dan says yes, and then Look, old man. gives me a bunch of mallards. Are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping because, in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied dogs. His shoes long always are weird to me. Just the big logs. I don't know. Form. It's weird. Carl Acheron, the sage. But it's like no way that's comfortable. North, far, also, what is it really doing? I guess north. it's giving him like Nobody eight, has spoken eight to him inches. In ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the fire canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just By the way, I'm really leaning toward picking back up Metroid Other M and making that the game that I just play moment. through. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that, that weird, might it? work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. Fashion over function. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away... It's not even particularly fashionable either, right? Precursor orb should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave mm -hmm. adventurer? You two Let's couldn't go. find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dog gooing eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. <laughs> Get in there I remember if before I feel like by Jack 3, friends. which was still a PS2 game, if Daxter started having uh, fur at that point. Right now, he's pretty furless. All right, let's see. We gotta change some settings here. All right. All right, let's. Okay. Flipped. That feel better? Honor, I can give you advice yeah, at any time during your quest. There we go. I'm back into it. Now. The key to Jack and Daxter, I feel like, is that move right there. Uh, the roll into the jump. Like it's, you know, it's not a move that Jack and Daxter invented. Um, I mean, I, I think, I think that goes to Mario 64, the long jump, which is just one button input and then the jump button to like get. A huge distance and like I, I don't know but it feels so good in this game like I love using it to clear gaps These and stuff like that Dexter always reminded me of Max from Sam and Max but like 10 degrees less than saying yeah I could see that although I haven't played a lot of Sam and Max oh, I guess I have a little bit of a voice there all right, we the got most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your. Also, I really love the uh, the end of this game too. Um, look at that PS2 memory card logo there. Um, because the end of the game has you like, if I remember, you're way up. Uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, you're sort of way up in the air. Is kind of what you're doing, and um. And you're like doing these huge leaps, like you're on these like big bounce pads. There we go. Oh, I guess you are collecting more than just. Um, I don't 
rem it's funny, I don't remember collecting the scout flies. I thought it was just power cells, but... I guess it is more than just. This game still controls very well. Dan in the chat telling bold-faced lies. Area, you can find even more power cells. Oh, that what you got for me? Eco, which oh, yeah. the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Gotta destroy all these. Oh, yeah, the thing that's nice about the yeah, is it lets you. Does it break boxes too? Yeah. Notice how each blue eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. Oh, I got up there. Do I, did I need to get all the way up there? Oh. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching. I mean Leafeon, is this on PS4 or PS3? This is PS3. Three. I have the. I still have my disc version of the Jack and Daxter HD collection, which I really like. That's a blue eco vent. More but uh, than I the think you can you buy Jack and Daxter on PlayStation Four. I think, right? I could be wrong about that. I remember there's, uh, I, think, I don't remember which Ratchet it was. I think it was the second or third one, maybe, where, well, first of all, there's, like, you find, you see pictures of Jack and Daxter just in the environment, which is weird. But there's also, you know, when you're collecting things as Ratchet and Clank, there's a scene where they do that animation, that, uh, that very iconic, like, you know, we just got the, the precursor orb thing. And there's a scene in, I think, Ratchet 2 where Ratchet and Clank collect something and they do that animation. And then they just kind of look at each other like, why do we do that? It's I always thought that was really funny. Did I get the... Yeah, that's, that's health, right? That action right there where he does that... Oh, I guess I'm not going fast enough. Whoa! Jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. I will say the one thing that like I feel like the the point where you're supposed to press X in Jack and Extra for the for the double jump, it takes a while to get the hang of because you can't do it any time. Hello, you are correct, Kyle. The Jack and Daxter bundle can be played on PS4 says Pyro Brace. Pyro blazed excuse me but you can't just put your jack and extra hd collection disc in your ps4 and you're good to go right i mean that's that would imply some kind of backwards compatibility that the uh the ps4 has never done Let's see, now we're off to the races here. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. <laughs> Chris Koshan. Oh man, I was looking forward to getting assaulted by more other M thumbs down. Chris, I'm I think I'll be playing other M. I think that's the one. I was even gonna put it to a poll of like all the games I've played recently, like Golden Sun and Castlevania Lords of Shadow and Other M. I was gonna put a poll of like, yeah, what should I keep playing? What should I pick up, you know, and continue on? Um, but man, I think it's just gonna be other M. You know. And peer them out, why would you? Follow the lamps. They take you right there. No. All of you. Get out of here. Alright. It's Kira, right? Hey baby! What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-grab zoomer? That just doesn't Rule seem. number one, I don't I mean, Leafeon says Golden Sun. I've never uh, played other ones, so that would probably be my choice. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I could put it up to a poll. 
Listen, if you need the other thing I like about Other M is it's like shorter than I remember too. My talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part funny. of the pipeline I, back to the Forbidden Temple. I never Maybe you should look really there for some noticed type it of a lot. I guess I noticed it occasionally. But um, in those scenes where it like showed other areas in the environment, there was a quick cut to black, um, which is like a technical limitation of the, uh, or was a technical limitation of the PS2. And even the PS3 a bit. I know something I never really thought about, but like, you would have cutscene, cutscene, then just a like a black screen, and then it would like go back to um, um, hey, go back to gameplay. Like and I remember I did an interview with um, Neil Druckmann for Uncharted 4, and that was something that he talked about that he's like one of the big things that we're able to do with the sort of processing power of the, of the PlayStation 4 and like. Um, just the way we can use the in-game assets to create cutscenes and stuff like that is like the game doesn't really cut to black um, between cutscenes and gameplay anymore, and like that's something that I love about this generation is that like there's no pause when it's like you're moving between cutscenes and gameplay, and it's like you really notice of it notice it in Last of Us Part Two because there's a lot of sequences where it's like oh we're, it's gameplay again like you just seamlessly go in out of cutscenes and stuff like that and it's it's funny to play this now because I just can't not notice the sort of quick cuts to black between cutscenes and stuff like that. Tier one, thank you, Scorch. Ah. Who is the bird dropping those? I, they're just like showing up. Hey, hey come that on. pelican just snagged a power cell. Let's go kick some big bird butt. I think I, I read an interview once with the voice actor that does Daxter, and he was like, I love playing Daxter, Daxter's hilarious, he's great, but it just, like, destroys his voice because he's just, like, screaming the whole game. <laughs> like, Daxter doesn't say anything without 100% uh, of his energy behind it. Kyle, will you do something special for your one year streaming anniversary, asks Scorch. I mean, I, I guess. I gotta figure out when that is. Isn't it like... I guess it's like August or something like that? No. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'll figure out something. Sorry. Oh, crap. Let's fell off the edge there. See, I rely on that, that long jump so much. And I think, uh, I, th I could be wrong, but in, in Jack 2, I think it you can use it as an attack. So you can just roll through an enemy and keep on moving, which I love. Scooby-Doo Knight of 100 Frights. <laughs> Can't say I'm super eager to play that one. Oh yeah, so you don't, you can't like swim necessarily, but you can at least dive underwater. Man, it's crazy how good the animation is. Do I need all these even? Is this like important? Do I just, can I get something for a hundred of them? No, okay, I'm just trying to collect them all. In area. Okay. And this is, I'm like, I'm in a level now, right? Is the idea, like, because everything's very seamless and open world, you know? Blue. There we go. Simple enough. Is he gonna go eat it again? 
Where is the zappy blue thing? There's one over there. I can't not go after them. I have to. There we go. All right. Let's see, one of the greatest 3D platformers ever, which I'm copying up. I think I've played it. I, I think. Like, I have a vague memory of, of playing it and helping someone. I remember they were, like, stuck on this sequence where Scooby-Doo has, like, mud boots. Does that sound familiar? Like, Scooby has to wear boots to walk through mud, and there's, like, like some crazy platforming sequence or something. Does that sound right? I think I've played it. I wonder th what's up with these guys again? The block? We're starting a campaign to have Kyle play Scooby-Doo well, Night of 100 Frights on his one-year anniversary stream. Oh, man. My congratulations. I guess I'd have to... So man, I don't know. I'd have to, like, track down a copy of that. How... Is that a I rare play. game? I don't if know. Don't work out, Daxter could always get a job controlling the village rat problem. <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't like Daxter, does it? Punch those poles up from below. And why did I do that exactly? This is, it's such a small thing, but like his animation changing between uh, the varying levels of water. I love that. Glorious. Yep, that part's tough. Not as tough as the fish factory, though. Good lord. Uh-oh. There are a lot of surprisingly tough moments in that game. Oddly enough, I think it's on Steam. <laughs> well, you know, I'm open to it, I guess. Forgot that, like, along with the, um, the long jump, you also have the just... Uh, if you time it right, you can do that that high jump too. What is this? Hmm, platforms. Ghost Babble Episode One was published on September third on YouTube, so I think it would mean September second is the one year anniversary. Uh, no, probably September third actually, because I was. That's when I before I was a Twitch affiliate, so I was just streaming to both. Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So what is that day? That's... Let's see what it is. Um, yeah, September 3rd is, is probably it. So yeah, I'll try to keep that in mind. Do something for that. I mean, it's a little ways away, but... Yeah, it's crazy that I've been doing it for as long as I have. I remember seeing a making of thing, maybe on the game disc itself, and they talked about how different animations can trans transition into each other so everything looks more smooth. That stuff is still impressive. Totally. Yeah, I mean, they're... I mean, that's, like, the big thing about Naughty Dog games in general is the, the sort of animation and presentation, whether that's during a cutscene or, like... Oh, there we go. Whoa. Do I have to fight you? No, I just don't fight you. Okay, here we go. Oh, hey, threat, threat. Do I have to break this egg? Good job. Now meet me down here by the egg. Oh, what did you? 
Uh, did I? I never talked to her, I guess, to get the mission, oh, <laughs> but I've my. completed it. I hope the poor deer's okay. Here's a power cell for your valor. I'm very impressed at how smooth this is. Oh, I get to ride you later, don't I? No, no! No, 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 no! And I Look, think it was this smooth on PS2 as well. This is the PlayStation 3 version. Mama. I don't think the frame rate was improved necessarily. Love at first sight. Oh. Listen, boys. I'll take this little chick back to the village. Is there a, a day-night cycle in the game, too? Care. Am I noticing that as well? Punch, punch, punch the egg. <laughs> says Scorch. Man, speaking of, Metal Gear goes babble and streaming for a long time. Oh, the music's a bit more layered. Or is that... Maybe that was always there and I just didn't notice it. Right? Like that flute there. That wasn't there earlier. Ow. It's funny, I think in Jack 2 you get that hoverboard, which is a cool idea of like having just a hoverboard that you can pull out at any time. But I feel like even in that game, like the sort of the um the roll jump just was like almost faster. Like, I remember that was one thing I was kind of disappointed about in getting that skateboard, I guess you could say, was that it, like, didn't really feel faster. Even though I really liked the idea behind it. Of, like, yeah, one thing you can unlock is this skateboard that lets you move around a little bit faster through the world. Oh, I see that now. What else we got going here? How many things do we have? We have we need twenty? Alright, let's let's see what else we got going on. Oh yeah, I punched up this platform. That was fun. You guys were into that, right? Alright, what else we got going on here? Is there more stuff over here? Okay. I know there's like a like a fishing mini game I think I can already access. I think I man, I must have gotten all that. I've already gotten 154 of those things. Jeez, it's gonna be like that. Uh, there's a big scary video game fish out here. Let's meet it. Bring up nightmares. <laughs> there was a trick on the hoverboard that boosted you, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that sounds right. Alright, what do we got going here? Oh, where am I? I don't even know where I am. Oh, okay, this is like the opening area. It's not like I lost any progress or anything, right? I wanted to show that fish. We all remember that fish. What a weird thing that, like, both Insomniac and Naughty Dog were, like, the dual protagonist kind of angle, I don't, it's weird that they both, I don't, they both came to that, because, like, they both the games came out around the same time. I wonder why that is. I mean, there's certainly, there's a lot, there's a lot of value in just, um, having a character with you the whole time in a game, like, not being alone in a game, uh, is just automatically kind of makes it a more interesting ex experience in a weird way, like, and I know, um, well, I know that Druckmann, who wasn't, I don't think he did a lot on Jack and Daxter, I could be wrong about that, but he, I know even he's like a fan of Ico, or Ico, and I mean, that's something that's, something that I think a lot of game designers learn by playing Ico for the first time, was like, oh, you know, just having a character with you that you have to take care of just automatically makes this a more compelling experience.
Oh, did that hurt me? Oh, oops. I didn't know that killed me. <laughs> I thought Jack... I, I forgot there was fall damage. I have no idea. That is the first thing you test. Game like that. I neglected it. Hey, cat. Nami. They got all close enough to not quite show up on camera, but was there. Would you rather have a character to take care of or a character that you don't have to worry about, like Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite? Oh, uh, a character that I don't have to worry about, 100%. I don't like I don't like taking care of characters in games. Like, I think... Eco does it well, but it, I, I, like... It's difficult, and it's it's stressful and frustrating. But yeah, like, uh... Yeah, in, in the ter in terms of things like you know, like Bioshock Infinite and uh, God of War and Last of Us, like, yeah, I would much rather um, have characters that are self-sufficient because it's never fun to have like to fail at, at a game with something that's not your fault, you know. I feel like the one of the biggest concerns about AO, IA partners is how much micromanaging you have to do with that. You found all the scout flies in this area. Mm. So how do I get up? Is there... Can I look in first person? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So like all the scout flies. Oh, we got a cat. Looks like she's... With the green screen, she looks like she's looking off into the ocean or something. Alright, let's see, let's see. So I got all the scout flies. I don't, can I even get up there yet? Oh, there's like a bank here. I didn't realize that. Cat cam. Yeah, <laughs> It's weird, the cats have, like, stopped hanging out with me as much. I used to always have a cat down here with me. Is that a new area? I don't think so. Oh, here come the bombs. <laughs> hey, remember when your cat shut off your stream? Yeah, that's happened before. I don't remember how that happened, though. I think she walked over the keyboard or something. Or clicked on the mouse, I think is what it was. I had the mouse hovering over the stop stream button, and then she stepped on it. That was very nice of her. Oh, hello. See, I like that. Yeah, I like that this is treated as, like, a separate area. But it, there's not any, there's no transition or anything. It's not like, well, now you're here. Hey! Little furry dude! Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? <laughs> Haven't you ever in seen college, I had an before? idea to take the worst tropes in games world, and make the best size, out of them. An underwater spunk, escort mission with a talkative partner. A oh, hey, I someone might be able to do it well. You never know. Sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. With her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, oh right. I just okay. hope she's all right. It's worth a power soap if you bring <laughs> Throwing a tur turret turret sequence and I'm sorry. Wait a minute. We are not going back. Ragnarok's Edge says, wasn't that an episode of are Bojack we? Horseman? Not the talkative part, though, right? Which is why that episode's so fascinating and weird. Can I grab onto the edge there? Okay. Yeah, see, all these people have missions in here. I guess I can talk to them. Although I did find that woman with the egg. I didn't talk to her, and it was fine. This guy's the mayor, right? No. Don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boys. See them? See how they're not moving? 
That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. Boys, everyone's too frightened. Now, this guy out and kind of sounds like happened. Nathan Lane, doesn't he? Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look. If you two that joke is confusing beam, because it's like, I'll give you a power cell. do oh, they have and, and bills? Thing, <laughs> like he, the mayor clearly accepted it as a joke. Campaign, but uh, what, does Daxter know what a bill is? Cell. Like an electricity bill? bill what, like why would he know what that is? Presses. Oh, okay. So, uh, you uh, want to make a contribution? Good. A, a sizable one, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a sizable contribution. I, well, 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 I, I, I just hope this power cell adequately represents my gratitude. Yeah, is this a capitalist society? I, I don't think so. All right, so I can get on the boat and go to the Misty Island to try to find that guy's muse, or I can keep exploring here. And if I remember correctly, even that's sort of pretty seamless. I don't think that's like a, a loading screen necessarily. There's a lot of birds in here. Is this really that simple where I can... Oh, leaf, get out of my way. Oh, okay. Oh, almost got enough to get another power cell from that guy. Oh, is this, this is like a herding game, I think, right? I don't, I don't know if I want to do this necessarily. Got a milk just yet, guys. Oh, it's you. Oh. Just Are the orbs currency or is this bartering? I don't I don't know. Some strange creatures tried to steal them earlier. You think you could help an old man try to get him back into the corral? Do I have to hit them, right? That's not so bad. Okay, and I also I don't have to punch them. Oh no, sir. Go on. There you go. Maybe there's four of them, I think. Right. I think I've herded a lot of animals in video games. I don't know if I'm ever, like, really jazzed about it. <laughs> oh, I got two. Can I get both of you guys here? one I hated the herding missions in Red Dead 2 I I don't remember them in Red Dead 2 which maybe is like a positive thing that like in a sense that I don't think they were too bad or I didn't struggle with them too much I remember the opening of I think Twilight Princess has an opening herding oh, minigame well too and I remember getting frustrated by that yes uh, Ragnarok's Edge says first thing that comes to mind is Twilight Princess trouble. yeah Oh, get 
down, get down. Oh, jeez, he really plays himself backwards, doesn't he? Oh, there we go. I can go get another power cell for Mr. Mayor. Fire Canyon. I'm ready to go to Fire Canyon. Is there anything up here? I remember there was also a mini game later where you kind of have to, um... You have to, like, ride a bike to, like, run past a bunch of plants to make them go away or something. I remember the first time I played Jack and Daxter ever, like, found a PS2 copy of the game and played it. Like, that was almost like a deal breaker for me. Like, that mission was so absurd. And it was, like, weirdly hard. And I remember even when the HD collection came out, I was like, oh, I'm gonna play Jack and Daxter again. I was dreading that mission the whole time. Um, and then I ended up getting it pretty quickly, so I don't know if I was... I don't know why, but... Oh, these things are scary, aren't they? This must be a Who awakens the oh, yeah, it's like the, the Cave of Wonders Which situation. One of you has the light within. From before time, I have watched and waited for the true hero to return. Present to me 120 precursor orbs for each power cell I contain. Oh, wait, what was I supposed to do? I wasn't paying attention. Mr. Cable Wonders, I'm sorry. Oh! There's a. I remember right before this game came out, Jason Rubin. Uh, kind of like. I think he played the HD collection. He played Jack and, da Jack and Daxter HD. Jason Rubin is like one of the Naughty Dog co founders who now works for Oculus and stuff. And he. Uh. I remember him saying that, you know, he learned that they were doing an HD remaster of Jack and Daxter, and he was, you know, they wanted, I think he was going to be available for just consulting or questions or anything like that, and he basically told uh, the company that was doing the remaster, like, he's like, good luck, because, like, when we made Jack and Daxter, like, we... The, the engine that they put together and the way they ultimately created the game, he just sort of described it as just being this, like, weird patchwork of, like, um, weird band-aids all over the place to sort of get the game up and running. And, like, he was like, I feel so far sorry for you guys having to try to dig through whatever code, you know, remains of Jack and Daxter because, like... Apparently, he, like, he was just like, it's, it was awful. It was just an absolute mess getting that game together. Like, he was more confident in, like, Jack 2 and 3. He was like, yeah, those, those you guys will be able to figure out, no problem. But uh, good luck with the original Jack and Baxter. But they did a good job. This is a great re remaster HD collection. Plays really well. Oh, yeah, this one has the weird endless pendulums. Yeah, that's very Crash Bandicoot. I like, I like that most of the levels in the game are actually not that big, uh, which I like. Like, I like, when it comes to, like, platforming games, I like dense levels with a lot of stuff in them. I don't really like big sprawling levels with things spread out all over the place. Like, my favorite Mario, 3D Mario levels are always the early ones that are pretty compact. And it's one of the reasons that, like, I'm not as big a Banjo-Kazooie fan as, uh, as most, even though I do like that era of platformers, like Super Mario 64 and this and stuff. I feel like... Banjo Kazooie kind of gets confusing with its uh, with its layouts. Hello, all. No other M today, says Doctor Mono. No, I because I'm still sort of like deciding what exactly I want to play in full. But I I I think it's gonna be um I think it's gonna be other M. I think on. Um, 
like on Monday, I, I I think I'll pick up other M, and then that'll be that's where we're, that's what we'll do. Like that'll be the um, the what I'm playing in full is other M. But Last of Us Two is out today, and I can I finished Last of Us Two last night, uh, and I really like that game a lot. That uh, that's so great. Like the final level of the game is like built up of a ton of these. It's awesome. But um, I was thinking about it. And I was like, well, I could play the first opening of Last of Us Part Two. I could play the first hour or something. I could maybe try to find a spot, part, like a save, partway through the game that isn't very spoilery. And ultimately, I was just like, I don't think, I don't, I don't think I'd want to watch that. I, I know I'll play new games sometimes, and you guys will jump in on chat and be like, I just wanted to say hi, just wanted to check in, but. Uh, I don't I don't want any spoilers for this, so I'm gonna peace out. And I totally get that. Like I feel the same way about a lot of games, um, where it's like I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know until I press start of you know what's happening with that game. So I'm like, well, let's play some Jack and Daxter. That's a good that's a good naughty dog. That's a good way to say hey, Last of Us Part Two's out today, and minor, very, I guess you could call it a spoiler. Um, but in the opening of the game, you are in Ellie's apartment, and she has a copy of this, of specifically this game, the Jack and Daxter HD collection. Chris Koshan, I know this is an absurd question to ask you. If you were to give The Last of Us to a score, what number do you think you'd lean towards? You know, I haven't really thought about that. Um, I. I really like that game a lot, and I like I, I get the tens. Like I see a ten, I'm like, yeah, I get it. That makes sense. But I don't know that I would go ten. I would maybe go like nine five nine seven five, just because there's like the last. There's like a portion of the game that like, uh, like it's like a, it's not even like a huge portion of the game, but I did near the end, like during the last few hours, kind of feel like. There were some moments where it was dragging a little bit, and I just wanted it to just I just wanted to get to the end. You know, like I was like, I'm I'm I just want to see I want this experience to be over, but not in the sense of like um like it, there was nothing bad about the story or anything. I was just I was just ready. It was just kind of mo kept going and kept going uh, after a point where I th thought maybe it should have uh, concluded. But even that is like not not a uh, it wasn't like anything that affected the larger experience, really. I just had I had a couple moments near the end where I was like, "All right, let's go," you know. Um, but uh, really love the game. I'm excited. I'm excited to see the uh, the conversation for the game uh, move away from the handful of people who saw spoilers and were disappointed by the spoilers based on things that you know they they haven't played the game. I'm eager to see the conversation around the game move to lots of people who have played it in full and talking about all the like the different themes and ideas and way the story is being told which you know I imagine in the next few weeks will be there A very good game I hope you guys I'm sure I'm sure a lot of you guys are planning on playing it and you should this. Fantastic. I do like this section of the game. I forgot about this. Like that you have these little sort of tight platforming areas. Is there a non-lethal option against attack dogs in The Last of Us 2? You know, someone DM'd me this morning about that, asking for, like, non-spoiler details of, of that, and I don't think there is. You can, you can avoid some dogs, but it's difficult, and I was not skilled enough to do it. Um, but I think... Yeah, and there and there are there is a moment that you have to attack a dog. Um, so yeah, I, if that's like I totally get if that's like if that troubles you and you like don't want to see that like 
I don't think it can be fully avoided. It can be mostly avoided, but it cannot be fully avoided. How does this work? So I got these little tendrils here. It's funny because there really aren't a lot of boss fights in this game. This is a boss fight. That is such a crash bandicoot enemy right there. Oh, you just have to wait it out. Okay. Scorch, and it's funny you say that there's a moment where you have to do it because Naughty Dog made a press statement when it leaked. They were attack dogs that you never have to kill them. Uh, yeah, I I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't I don't want to dig too deep into it and discuss it too much in fear of you know accidentally uh, spoiling things. But um, but like when you it when you encounter just a. A character. Oh, I died. When you when you're like, I'm like uh, when you're just trying to make it from point A to point B, like you have those sequences where there's a bunch of enemies and you have to sneak around and stuff like that. And some of them have dogs. I believe in those sequences that you can get away from the dogs, but it's it's difficult. Um, it's difficult to get through those sequences, uh, killing less people. I th I think you might even be able to get through them without killing anybody, but it's like it takes a lot of skill. So have I not been through this area yet? Am I? I don't know. I've really been around here. There we go. So I just gotta kind of stay out here, right? Like I just. so funny to me like I, I feel like maybe you even do defeat enemies like that in Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> I mean there's those turtles with the spiky backs but I don't know if they like remove spikes you know. Oh ouch. Come on. Is it just three hits? Is that what we got here? You're exposing yourself like that, buddy. Uh, Taylor Wagon talking about Last of Us. It's an incredibly violent game that is too much for me personally, humans or dogs. Totally. Like, that's a totally fair. Absolutely. Like, like it's a powerful game, and then, like, part of that is. is the violence that they represent. And they represent that very well, but it is also like it's it can totally be too much for certain people and that's that's totally that's fine, you know. Alright, let's see. What else I wanna go do that I mean I do and I don't. I wanna do that fishing game. Is this it right here? I hit circle the what do you have in the basket? Nothing to talk about. Them monsters patrolling the ocean took a bite out of me fish. Okay, should I stop playing Xenogears for catch. now and tackle The Last no of Us 2 because I of I risk of spoilers? I mean, I would, personally. Maybe. Also, it's like, it's a long game, Last of Us Part 2. I think I clocked in it. 
32 hours, I think I looked last night. But that's still a hell of a lot less than Xenoblade. You know what I mean? Like, Xenoblade's in the, what, like the 100? <laughs> so to, like, take a Xenoblade break to, to get through Last of Us 2, I think I think would be smart, you know? One pound fishies and five pound fishies. And if you miss 20 pounds of good fish, then I'm gonna take me net back from you. There are poisonous eels in this river. Catch even a one of them boogers, and you'll poison the whole darn catch. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, this one is pretty quick. Here comes a big one. Steady boy. Oh no, that was just a one pounder, right? Oh jeez. I missed. Why am I fishing for this guy? Oh. So those, the yellow ones, are like, that's uh, priority number one. How many fish am I, how many can I miss? 20, I think? Here comes a big one. Thanks, buddy. Missed again. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. How many have I missed? Seven. Hey, that was pretty good. Oh, jeez. Pretty proud of how that went, actually. <laughs> Here comes a big one. This is one of those mini games that's like. I just want to be successful enough so I don't have to do it again. <laughs> Steady boy. Hold Concentrate. Almost there, he says. Uh, I think it's 15 or 20. Hey, there we go. Caught 200 pounds of fish. Gee, did I really? Uh, Holy cow. Lovers. Here's the power cell I promised. And you can use my boat to village dock. Oh, I got a like. new follower. <laughs> Does the game do a good job of sending the message that violence is uncomfortable and should be avoided, or does it feel like it glorifies it? I feel like it definitely does, like, does not glorify it. Like, no violence in that game, no element of violence in that game is ever seen as like cool or good and i think that just like runs throughout the whole thing it's not it is not a game that is to me anyway i mean certainly there are different opinions on this that'll that'll come out through the next couple of weeks but like i think the game is about the danger of violence and what violence does to people and like and house and obsession and like how that uh can just kill you from the inside like i i don't i think like that's yeah and i feel like the last game was that too like it's the violence is not cool in last of us like it's not like doom i feel like because someone mentioned doom is like the thing that kind of i don't really like doom i really tried to play doom eternal recently and i was like and I just didn't, I don't know, I, it wasn't doing it for me because it was like, look how cool this fatality is. Like, look how cool it is to chop off this demon's head where Last of Us uh, goes out of its way to make you feel uncomfortable about the violence that is happening on screen. Like, I winced frequently in The Last of Us. It's funny to be talking about violence in The Last of Us when I'm like, yeah, you know, the guys that made Last of Us. And I'm just like <laughs> running around this colorful environment collecting eggs. <laughs> Uh, I always worry about games that are going to be the next highlight clip used in politics to blame violent video games for real life violence. Well, I mean, Last of Us is going to be that, and there's a, there's no avoiding that because things are going to be taken out of context. You know, it's kind of like um, when that Danny Boyle movie came out, uh, Train Spotting. Um, a lot of sort of government officials looked at that movie and they're like this movie which is about heroin abuse is glorifying heroin and how amazing heroin is i mean look at this look at these scenes but it's like if you watch that movie 
that movie is about how awful heroin is. <laughs> like, you can't just take a, like a little five second clip and be like, oh uh, yeah, see, there's, see, this happens in the game, so that means that it's bad. It's like, no, you gotta take the whole, the whole piece of art into, a, you know, into account here and consider what it is saying about that one five second clip that you've taken. So, like, yeah, Last of Us will show up in those, in those clips, and people are gonna be like, assume, and they're gonna talk about how, you know, it's a game for kids. Kids are playing this game. It's not, you know. There's no way around that, unfortunately. The new thing that I was seeing shared around Facebook recently was like. <laughs> Someone showing a Max Payne screenshot, and they were co using it as a, a point to complain about how guns have been removed from the the new Looney Tunes shorts that HBO is making. They're like, oh, guns are okay in this children's game, but not okay in Looney Tunes cartoons, which it just struck me as odd. I was like, Max Payne is not a game for kids. If, if kids are playing, it's because their parents bought it for them without figure out what that is. You know? All right, I was trying to decide if there was anything else I wanted to do in Jack and Daxter here because I'm coming up on the end of the stream and like anything else I were going to go do would be a big, uh, big to do. So to speak, that would be like going to a new level or something like that. But um, yeah, I think we're good. I think we'll call it for now, and um, it's fun revisiting this game. I still really love Jack and Daxter. It's still like weirdly my favorite Naughty Dog game, <laughs> like even over like Uncharted and Last of Us in a weird way. I just like just really love uh, Jack and Daxter. I would I'd love to see them return to it someday. I don't think they ever will, but I think that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in. On Monday, I, I think I'm gonna go back to Metroid Other M. I think I'm gonna make that the next the next game that I play in full. It's fu it's fun because like I I have like a I am weirdly defensive for that game, even though like I also admit that it absolutely has its issues and moments of that game that are actively bad. But uh, I think that makes it fun for me to to play to talk about why I like it. And also, it's not super long either, which I had forgotten. I thought it was. A big like 20 hour, 20, 30 hour game, but I was looking at my save file for when I originally played it, which I got 100%, and I was at like 12 or 15 hours or something, which is like, that's not bad. That's good for a long stream. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Go play The Last of Us Part 2 tonight, and you know, in a couple months, we'll talk about it in full with spoilers and everything. It'll be fun. All right, thanks everybody, bye.